There are four main forces involved in the formation of the glomerular ultrafiltrate. Together, they are referred to as the net ultrafiltration pressure, which is abbreviated as PUF. As we describe each force, we'll plot the pressure generated across the length of the glomerular capillary, starting with the afferent side where plasma enters and ending on the efferent side where plasma exits. The largest force involved in the formation of the ultrafiltrate is referred to as the glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure, and it is abbreviated as PGC. It is responsible for driving the ultrafiltrate from the glomerular capillary into the Bowman space. It is typically uniform at 50 millimeters of mercury across the entire length of the glomerular capillary. Changes in afferent or efferent arterial tone have the greatest influence over glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure. With this in mind, the net ultrafiltration pressure along the length of the glomerular capillary, represented by the blue area, is equal to the glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure. As the ultrafiltrate moves into the Bowman space, it creates a small but uniform hydrostatic pressure referred to as the Bowman space hydrostatic pressure, and it is abbreviated as PBS. It changes little across the glomerular capillary with an average of 10 millimeters of mercury. Likewise, it opposes the glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure, which reduces the net ultrafiltration pressure from 50 millimeters of mercury to 40. The next force we'll discuss is referred to as the glomerular capillary oncotic pressure, and it is abbreviated as PIGC. This pressure opposes the glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure by promoting the movement of fluid from the Bowman space back into the glomerular capillaries. The oncotic pressure represents the osmotic pressure that non-permeable solutes exert within the glomerular capillaries. These non-permeable solutes are comprised mostly of plasma proteins like albumin. The glomerular capillary oncotic pressure varies along the length of the glomerular capillary. For example, it is lowest near the afferent end at about 25 or 30 millimeters of mercury and rises to 40 millimeters of mercury or more at the efferent end. This occurs because as the ultrafiltrate moves into the Bowman space, the non-permeable solutes within the glomerular capillary become more concentrated as the filtrate moves along the glomerular capillary. The final force we'll refer to is the Bowman space oncotic pressure, which is abbreviated as PIBS, and under normal physiological conditions, it is zero because proteins and other non-permeable solutes are not filtered. So with a net hydrostatic pressure of 40 millimeters of mercury, and a net oncotic pressure of 30 millimeters of mercury, the net ultrafiltration pressure equals 10 millimeters of mercury across the length of the glomerular capillaries. In simpler terms, the net ultrafiltration pressure is equal to the net hydrostatic pressure minus the net oncotic pressure. With this in mind, let's talk about an important variable that significantly affects the net ultrafiltration pressure, and that is renal plasma flow. We'll use this gauge to illustrate changes in renal plasma flow from low to high while simultaneously illustrating how net hydrostatic pressure, net oncotic pressure, and net ultrafiltration pressure are affected along the length of the glomerular capillaries. At low renal plasma flow, we see that the net ultrafiltration pressure, represented by the blue area, is attenuated and limited to the early part of the glomerular capillary. We also see the net hydrostatic pressure across the glomerular capillary is stable at 50 millimeters of mercury, while the net oncotic pressure increases rapidly to where it equals that of the net hydrostatic pressure nearly halfway across the glomerular capillary. Let's pay close attention to what happens to net ultrafiltration pressure, net hydrostatic pressure, and net oncotic pressure as we increase the renal plasma flow in a stepwise manner. From this example, we see that stepwise increases in renal plasma flow result in stepwise increases in net ultrafiltration pressure, which is entirely due to stepwise decreases in net oncotic pressure. Furthermore, notice how when renal plasma flow increases, a larger portion of the glomerular capillaries are used for filtration. This is entirely due to increases in the filtration fraction associated with decreased renal plasma flow. Briefly, as renal plasma flow decreases, a larger fraction of the filtrate passes into the Bowman space, which has the net effect of increasing the concentration of the non-permeable solutes within the glomerular capillary. This rise in net oncotic pressure occurs in a non-linear manner, which is why most of the filtration along the glomerular capillary occurs unevenly.